uh, now, um, I'll start with a quick introduction. My name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of a new age consulting firm called Consolidon. Uh, Consolidon is new age in the sense that a normal consulting firm will go and hire consultants and staff them on projects to deliver uh, client uh, projects. Uh, our model is very different. So instead of hiring a lot of consultants, we partnered with uh, more than 300 boutique consulting firms from all over the globe. Um, this allowed us to, in the first two years of operations, get more than 500 consultants in our firm, uh, uh, and which you know we couldn't do if we were in the traditional consulting model. Uh, we delivered more than 200 plus projects across the GCC region in the first two years. Uh, we now have access to more than 5,000 consultants across the globe uh, uh, who we pull in for projects, consulting projects from time to time. Uh, so that's Consolidon briefly. Um, Connected Insights is a summit that is running for seven days. Um, we're doing about 50 plus webinars and panel discussions over the next seven days. Uh, we've had about 500 unique participants join us for the first two days, day one and day two. We're looking forward to a lot more, connecting with a lot more uh, like-minded indiv individuals like yourselves in these webinars. Um, I'll just couple, uh, talk about a couple of quick housekeeping points. Um, so what we'd like you to do is whenever you have any questions, do please put it in the chat. Feel free to interact in the chat. Uh, we've made you all panelists so that you can unmute uh, yourself. You can switch on your video, ask questions, interact uh, as well. Um, and I think Nikhil will give you further uh, guidance on when to ask questions, et cetera. Um, look out in the chat for certain giveaways. Okay, uh, one of the giveaways that we're uh, handing out in the chat is, you know, we have six workshops over the next, uh, uh, well, five workshops left now in the next seven days. Um, these are paid workshops, about two ninety nine dollars per attendee, but we're giving away a few invites uh, uh, for free. Uh, all you need to do is fill a short form, tell us how you will benefit from that workshop and then uh, we'll send you an invite. Um, so that's one giveaway. We're also looking for speakers. This is the first edition of Connected Insights. We're looking for speakers for the second edition of Connected Insights, uh, which will be in May. Uh, so we'll send out a form towards the end of this webinar. Please uh, fill that in if you'd like to, if you'd like to attend, uh, if you'd like to uh, join us as a speaker. Uh, one last thing, we have our keynote at 3 p.m. today. Uh, this is by uh, Raj V, who is, um, uh, who is U.S. Entrepreneur of the Year, U.S. National 2020. Uh, so that will be a very, very interesting session. It starts at 3 p.m. today. Uh, so we'll send the link to join that, the Zoom link, if you're, if you're interested. Uh, so that's about it from me. I'm really looking forward, uh, Nikhil, Nikhil and we have been collaborating for the last three or four months. He's recently set up his firm here in the UAE with the idea of building a practice in the in the Middle East region. Uh, so really, really looking forward to this session, Nikhil. Thank you, Varun. Um, and I would like to congratulate you and your team, you know, for organizing this wonderful event. Uh, guys, my name is Nikhil. Uh, I'm the managing director of Optimally Outsourcing Solution. Uh, today, my colleague is also joining with me. He's a data expert, has around 20 years of experience in big data and analytics. His name is Yogesh. He'll do most of the talking this afternoon. Uh, before we kickstart the, the webinar about you know, leveraging power of big data and analytics, uh, I would like to show you this small video. It's a short video, around 100 seconds. What the industry leaders are you know, talking about, uh, that they quoted about big data and all. This will also give us an opportunity to settle down before we kickstart the webinar. Uh, here you go. You can you keep it.
Thank you, Yogesh. So yeah, um, as I as well mentioned, today's topic is uh, leveraging power of big data and analytics. So uh, the agenda would be, uh, we'll be talking about uh, what is big data, use of big data in businesses, the technical aspects of, uh, of, of big data and analytics, how the big data is helping you know businesses and individuals to grow. And uh, at the end, I think we'll have a question and answer session. Uh, before we start the pre presentation, I will just tell you who we are. Uh, we represent Optimally Outsourcing Solution. Uh, we are in a small uh, IT consulting firm. Uh, we provide our services across the globe. Uh, primarily, I think those who are looking to expand their uh, you know, technical team uh, remotely, we pitch in and we provide those uh, developers to those guys. Uh, we are not specific to one country where the developer comes from. We have partnered with different parts of the world, uh, for example, Philippines, Vietnam, Eastern European, South American. Uh, depending on the client requirement, uh, you know, we onboard our developers. Uh, from last two years, we've been extensively you know, working and building our team on big data and analytics. Uh, we have a huge team of data engineers who are currently working on few projects, uh, and, and they are ready to take up any, any future product in, in big data domain. So you may have uh, read or heard this phrase called data is a new oil of digital economy or data is a new gold or so many things about data. Uh, before we go into a technical aspect or you know, go into detail about, about big data, I just want to give a few examples you know, why data is so important, how data is you know, influencing the business decision or, or the day-to-day you know, -day, uh, business activity. Uh, for example, uh, the taxi services. Uh, you know that right now we can switch on the app, we can book our cabs and taxis. Now imagine the taxis, the, the cab services, like the, the companies are getting huge data in, you know, from drivers, from their passengers, fares, routes, um, you know, their vehicle and customer feedback, driver feedback, and so on. So much of data. How these companies have invested heavily into big data, they extracted all this data, you know, converting those into a meaningful insight and predicting the future supply and demand and, you know, providing up, uh, coming up with the new strategies to give a better experience to the customer. And that's the reason you have seen some example, like when you book, try to book a cab in some P cars or in, in a non-P car, the player keeps changing. So this is one of the example on how data is, you know, playing an important role there. Um, second good example I'll tell you about uh, a pub chain, uh, you know, there is a, uh, there is a pub chain who, who owns, uh, you know, several pubs across the country. Uh, they've decided for somehow, you know, for some reason they decided to, you know, get rid of the traditional way of serving alcohol or the beer. They just installed some, some vending machine where uh, the concept was pour yourself. You just go there and you can pour your beer by yourself. So there would be no, no bartender and all. The concept are very clear. Um, you go, they'll give you a, a, a magnetic tap card, which is linked to your credit card. It could be a prepaid. You just go tap in, tap out, pour your beer and pay whatever you drank. You know, it could be 200 mil, it could be a liter and all. The interesting thing is that when they started analyzing data, they found out that you know, the customers were you know, consuming 20 to 25% more alcohol than the traditional way. Good for the business, not good for us. So just remember this when you go to these kind of pubs next time and uh, drink responsibly. And the same industry uh, also found out that, you know, the 70% of the year consumption were between eight to 10 in the city outlets. And the same time frame and you know, duration, uh, there were only 40% of the consumption. So all this data gave them, you know, a lot of insight where, you know, they can plan their future promotional offer uh, you know, for, for different location. Another good example where AI and B, you know, the data played an important role. Uh, you may have seen uh, some of the drive-in of the fast food chain. You see there are the screens on the driveway and the menu display those prices. What is happening, I think, behind the door? Uh, as you know, that all these uh, big food chains have invested so much of money in, in, into understanding the data. They have all the data, for example, from preparation of uh, just a burger or all the item, the preparation time, and, and another uh, major part of the process. What they did is in the drive-in, they kept some sensor. The sensor are sending those data back to the system, which is telling the flow of the traffic. How it benefit the, the customer as well as the organization? When they see, when the system find out, okay, that the huge traffic, 
you know, there is a big queue lined up and I drive it. The menu changes the item. They display those items which are faster to prepare so that the queue can move faster. And the same thing is opposite when there is no traffic there, uh, they display those items which are, you know, higher margin for those organizations. So a lot of data work is going on in the back door. And just to end with uh, another example, now we know that we are all surrounded by different apps and variables, watches and all who keep sending, you know, storing your, your physical health about you know, your data and keep sending those data to your healthcare provider, to service provider or, 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 or the apps. So just to wrap it up, like say one day you decided to go out, you took a cab, you see there is a data happening, you know, work is going on. You went to have a good time in the bar, the data is there. You decided to have a nice burger or, or, or fries, the data work is there. And you decided to come back and sleep and say, oh, I had a good time. Next morning when you woke up, you're getting a lot of notification from your healthcare provider or your, your variable. Dude, you had a good time. It was time to get up and burn those extra calories because your heart rate was 20% higher than your average. So those kind of few examples, you know, like how data is influencing, you know, all these business decisions. So I'll hand over the, the floor to Yogesh, who will talk more about, you know, in detail about the big data and analytic part. Over to you, Yogesh. Thanks. Thanks sure. a lot, Nikhil. Um, hello, everyone. This is Yogesh. And um, as Nikhil mentioned, I have been working on the data and now big data because it's all big data world uh, for the last several years. Uh, I have worked with multiple organizations, multiple clients in different capacity. And uh, so I'm going to talk more about what big data is, how we can leverage. And we have intentionally included a lot of examples because our audience is a mix. Uh, we have audience uh, who are business uh, decision makers. We have audience who are a lot more technical. So you will find this entire presentation webinar uh, where we have a lot of examples. Uh, some places we are going too deep, some places we are going at a shallow rate. So if you have any questions, please use chat box uh, to ask your questions and uh, we'll be taking all the questions towards the end of the webinar. So with that, let's get started. What is big data Nikhil already talked about? Now, Couple of examples. This was one of the clippings from a uh, leading uh, online, uh, online news agency, which says 90% of the world's data was created or has been created uh, in the last two years and businesses are spending a lot more dollar money, specifically on the big data and analytics. And this particular clipping is from 2018. At the same time, how businesses are using big data to create user personas. When I say personas, it is about the user profiling and using that, making a better uh, business decisions to fast track their business growth. Similarly, uh, this is one of the leading newspaper uh, based out of India. It says that how big data and analytics is being used effectively to faster the business growth. Similarly, Fight moves in big data, how financial industries are using uh, big data and doing MNAs, mergers and acquisitions, and analyzing customer data for financial services. Now, if, if you see that there is an entire list of things which are coming where users are open to give more and more data about themselves, about their personal preferences for the better services. And one such example is the finance service where based on the user's credit score or the spending limit, uh, spending capacity or number of credit cards the user has, financial services are offering more and more products. Let it be a higher capacity uh, credit card or you know, uh, royalty or loyalty benefits using some payback points as an example or you know, the redemption option. This is one very good example where uh, this is also from one of the leading uh, online presence uh, website, which says how airlines are using data in the sky. The, I really like the heading where it says data mining in the sky, where leading airlines and not necessarily this is the entire exhaustive list. There, is a, there are a lot of examples where based on frequent flyer status or based on their um, flyers preferences, airlines are offering better onboard experience. Let it be uh, entertainment, let it be uh, food and beverages, let it be um, on-plane um, calling. 
So there are a bunch of these examples where companies are mining this data, leveraging data which is available out there within their system, outside of their system for better user experience. And at the end, what it results in loyalty of the customers who are coming back to them again and again and consuming the services which these big organizations are uh, providing. Um, to move on, let's understand what customers want, right? We'll get into big data aspect, but the first thing is we need to also understand from the customer's point of view. And few reasons why customers come to you, to your shop. And when I say shop, it is not necessarily a physical shop, one store. It can be a chain of shops for a retailer. It can be an online presence of e-learning website or e-learning provider or um, as big as Amazon. Right? If you are a small uh, business owner who is running a small cab service, that's your shop. Right? So it is a placeholder where um, you know it is a it is a notion of telling what your customers want. Now, your shop, you are providing things which your customers are looking for, and it is available in this stock. If you are not providing things, then there is a high chance that customer, if they don't, if you don't have enough footfall or if you don't have an online presence where customers can come to your website or a physical store where they can come and talk to you for the things which they are looking for, then there is a risk. So customers want things available in the stock, what they are looking for. Second is your shop is accessible to them and it is nearby. Nearby is from the physical distancing point, but it is also from the customer service, right? Are you able, are you accessible to them when they need you? Uh, pretty important. The shop has optimal pricing. Here we are not saying minimal pricing because there is nothing like that. Uh, optimal pricing is pretty important because there are a lot of factors which influence customers' behavior. There are a lot of websites which offer comparative study of article A versus article B available in two different shops. Customers can go and read reviews, ratings, and then make a decision. So it is very important that you are giving them optimal pricing. Fourth, you have attracted promotional offer. Pretty important. Again, loyalty of customers, specifically in the digital age, exists. We are not saying that it doesn't exist. However, a lot more loyalty comes when you are offering them attractive promotions. And you are receptive to the needs of the customers and react in a timely manner. It is very important. These days, people are spending a lot more money for the services more than the thing which they are buying from you. And uh, the idea is how do you turn the wheel and rather than reacting in a timely manner, how do you switch to proactive action so that you are giving things which customer need before they actually ask for it? As an example, I'll give you an example of Amazon, those tight push buttons. Amazon has come up with those push buttons where which you can put it in your washing machine. And uh, even before your detergent is over, there is, a, there is a facility to users where you don't have to log into a website and order. You just do the push button and it, it automatically orders. Right? Now, this is one such example where you are giving enough flexibility and, uh, and comfort to your customers who can, who can interact with you, your business, and uh, use all their problem even before problem occurs. Now, from the business's point of view, what business owners want. And uh, here it's you. You may be a vendor serving a particular thing to your client. You may be a small business owner. You may be a big online presence or offline presence um, organization. So first thing is retaining your existing customers. Pretty important. And making them come back again and again. Again and again is pretty important again because if users or customers are coming to your shop, your online website or to your hotel or your restaurant, then how would you retain them? One of the options probably is give them promotional offer, what we talked about in the previous slide. Um, and then how would you convert these users from tourist bucket, which are coming to you occasionally into more loyal bucket where they are coming to you again and again more frequently? That's one thing. Second is, Acquiring new customers. So 
while you are focusing on retaining your existing customers, you also would like to focus on acquiring new customers. This is the place where businesses spend hundreds and thousands of dollars in customer acquisition. We call that as a CPA. What is the cost per acquisition of a customer? And when you are spending so much money, you would better retain them for a longer period of time, right? Otherwise, you are probably acquiring but not able to retain. It is a loss to the business. And then third is edging out the competition. You also need to be aware of what all your competitors are doing. How would you edge out that competition? How would you turn the wheel by being reactive to proactive? Now, if you see all of these things, there is a lot of data which comes into picture. The first thing is acquiring new customers. You need to know that how much money you are spending when you are acquiring a customer. And then how much money you are spending to retain a customer? What are your competitors doing? What are the promotional offers you are running? Are customers coming to you because of a promotional offer or something else? That lot of analysis and data churning happens in this entire funnel of um, business owners. Now, we talked about customers' needs. We talked about what businesses want, but a million dollar question is how, how we can make it work, how we can be proactive in understanding customers' needs, uh, how we can offer them a better service when they need it and so on and so forth. Um, pretty simple answer is leveraging big data and analytics. And even though I'm saying simple, it is not simple. It is pretty complex and we'll, we'll walk you through the various, um, various techniques and options in the big data, which you can leverage. So let's, Zoom in a little bit. What is the key to success? If you are working on a, on an e-grocery store or hospitality industry, or if you are uh, serving your customers in the financial institute, one of the things is basic principle. What is the basic principle, right? It is all customer driven market. Understand your customers, give them what they want, when they want, and how they want pretty important, simple things, but it takes a lot of time to get to these level of details. Now, the biggest challenge is, we all know, probably it's a, a refresher, not customers, not all customers are equal and their requirements are different. So if you are running a e-grocery store, your customer base may be, a, there is a gender, uh, component there is a gender dimension to it you may be having female customers versus male customers versus old uh, maybe uh, teenagers who are coming to your website or your shop they all are different their requirements are different their requirements don't stay the same they evolve and there are various reasons why your customers requirements would evolve maybe they are aging hence their requirements are changing or their, their needs might be getting influenced because they are living, they're not living in isolation. They are influenced by many factors. Let it be the social media, let it be another customer's preference. Lot of uh, influencing factors are here. And these are the big challenges for the organizations. Now, how would you solve? How would you solve all of this is by profiling your customer. I'll give you some examples. What do I mean? I was going, I last, uh, last month, I went to a grocery store, a physical grocery store. And uh, for my, you know, weekly or bi-weekly grocery shopping. And I bought things which I wanted. And uh, the cashier, he asked me my phone number. I gave him a phone number uh, so that he can send me the receipt on my mobile. And after punching it, uh, he gave me a, Horlicks packet, not a big thing, pretty small thing, 20 rupees Horlicks pocket packet. Um, I was happy because it was free to me. And then the person who was standing behind me in the queue, let's call him person A, he, did, he went through the similar experience, but at the end, the cashier gave him a soup, a packet of soup. Now that was, you know, it, it surprised me why that happened. Why cashier gave me a Horlicks packet versus a soup packet to the other person who is in the same line. Maybe he's, he bought similar items, if not similar items, maybe the similar amount worth of items. 
um, I asked this cashier, like, why that discrimination? Like, why he gave me a uh, Horlicks packet versus soup to someone else? And he said, sir, I don't know. This is what my system told me to give you a soup, uh, Horlicks and soup to someone else. What is, what is happening here? If you see, maybe their system has already profiled me as a customer who, who probably has kids, maybe because of my past buying patterns. Maybe I bought diapers, maybe I bought some stationary pencil or you know, some stencils. And the other person, maybe he was buying things more of the table food, right? Or something which is not related to kids. And using the data, what this retailer has done is maybe he influenced me positively. And that's the reason why I'm giving this example here. And he probably ensured that next time when I plan to go to a shop, I will probably prefer the same shop, maybe with an expectation that I will get something similar or maybe different things. Okay? This is pretty important. And I'm just giving an example of physical store. It same concept applies to any other store. Let it be the financial institute, let it be um, right services, let it be Zomato or the you know, food delivery uh, services that we have uh, on our fingertips now. Now, let's, let's talk about what are the domains where big data plays a bigger role. One is the e-learning. Uh, pandemic has taught us a lot more things. Um, taught adults as well as kids. Now, when kids are working and uh, learning, doing their schooling and uh, coaching from home, online education industry has boomed pretty big time. Now, these industry, these service providers now exactly know what all the tests kids are taking, what all the courses where kids are not finishing completely, whether they are attending classes full-time or they are getting distracted watching YouTube or Netflix in parallel. All of these data is getting collected and these e-learning service providers are processing this data and engaging with parents, giving them feedback so that parents can work with kids to make them more focused. At the same time, these institutes or these companies are coming up with a better modules as opposed to a bigger you know, six months um, learning classes, better modules which can be completed in a smaller chunks. And what they are figuring out is once they shrink the scope of learning, I'm not saying that completely eliminate learning, it is chunking it in a smaller chunks. They are seeing a lot more involvement and engagement with the kids as opposed to saying that this is two months period or two months course. Another is e-grocery. I gave an example. Let's take another example. If you go and uh, shop on a website, let's say Amazon Fresh or Noon or uh, Careful, if you go and a specific time of the day in the morning hours, let's say between six to eight, you are buying a meal. Now, these online grocery stores are intelligent enough using the data, which is you may like, or people have also bought. Now, it's obvious that if you're buying milk, maybe you are also interested in uh, eggs or breads or some fruits. Whereas if you're going in the evening, the choices would be something different. So e-grocery stores, again, they are collecting a lot of data. And when I say collecting a lot of data, I will also emphasize on ethical data collection. We'll talk about it. And then using the individual customer personas, offering these services on the fly. Last, hospitality industry. It is pretty big industry and Dubai is one of the favorite destinations for all the users or travelers across the globe. Uh, it is not only limited to your airlines or your hotel, your restaurant. There are tons of other uh, thing like guide industry, right? People are there who guide tourists to des different places. Um, I'll give an example. I was traveling from San Francisco to Las Vegas a few years back, and I booked same chain of hotel in both the places just because I wanted to get some loyalty points. And uh, when I checked into San Francisco hotel, I asked housekeeping person that I need a smaller thin pillow as opposed to those big pillows that we get in uh, US. And uh, this housekeeping staff gave me a small thin pillow and I was happy. Uh, I didn't pay a lot of attention there. But when I checked into a hotel in Las Vegas, 
this housekeeping guy came and another housekeeping guy in that hotel, he came and offered me the small thin pillow. Now, it was a wow factor for me as a traveler, as a tourist, but maybe beyond the scene, under the hood, they collected the data, they, they profiled me, and then they offered the similar preferred pillow to me when I checked into Las Vegas. There are tons of these examples. I'm giving you know, very specific examples. You can think of big data or data playing multiple roles here. Uh, and it's not only about data, it's also, also about the algorithm which is running behind. There is a lot of data science stuff which is going on, a lot of artificial intelligence which is going on. Now, let's zoom in a little bit. I talked about uh, different user segmentation or profiling. As organizations are collecting a lot more data, customer segmentation is equally important. Let's talk about advertising industry. Now, as an advertiser, if you are spending your uh, dollar money, you would like to target users specific for your requirement. Right? If you are a Lakme, as an example, uh, or somebody who is in the fashion, women's fashion, you would like to target women in the age of, let's say 25 to 35, who is spending a lot. Right. Versus if you are uh, if you are Tommy or if you are a Nike targeting your men shoppers, you would segment them differently or you would target a different segment of customers. These are all the cohorts that we create. Another example, re-engagement. Uh, I talked about it a little bit when we talk about customer retention. Let's take example of app developer. You have spent hundreds and thousands of dollars developing an app, you advertised it, you publicized it in uh, Google Play Store or Apple um, App Store. Now, what is your incentive to do that so that customers can come to you again and again? Now, one thing is, yes, you advertise, customers downloaded your app, but what after that? Maybe there is an engagement for first few days, but after that, customers don't even come to you. How would you use that data for a particular customer when they came to your system and since how long they are not there and how would you re-engage with them using the data which you have for them right? it's another re-engagement uh, example now while we are doing that while businesses are focusing on customer segmentation re-engagement customer acquisition uh, edging out the competition all of that is good but you also need to care about reducing your operational cost if you are in a manufacturing unit you would like to know what is your waste management strategy? Where is the maximum waste stage happening? Nikhil gave an example of burger shop or burger outlet. Now what they are doing is they are not only focusing on speeding up their delivery, but also focusing on what is the wastage happening at the peak hour versus what is the wastage happening during low peak hour. And one thing is we all understand, you cannot improve something which you cannot measure. And what data tells you is what with the data which you are collecting or which you have or you will be processing, you will be able to make these decisions in the right way, in a better way. Now, let's get some, you know, let's understand what is the bookish definition of big data analytics. And the reason why I say bookish definition is because there are various definitions depending on the context, depending on who you talk to. So, in the simplest term, big data and analytics is a way to extract meaningful insights from the data that you have, or that you have collected, or that you have purchased from outside. And with these insights, you are going to get some hidden patterns. Maybe your custom behavior is changing. Unknown correlations, maybe because there is a seasonality factor, your customers are not coming to you. Pandemic, very good example, not so good in terms of our personal lives, but it has taught us a lot of things how customers behavior change, the, the way we stopped going to cinema hall, the, the way we stopped traveling, but what does it manifest into? There are some known, some unknown correlations, market trends and customer preferences. This is a very wide topic in terms of what actually is big data analytics. So please take it with a grain of salt. Um, you know, you can, we can assume or we can understand that it is extracting meaningful insights. Uh, we'll talk about what the ETL is and what are the technological aspects in the subsequent slides. Okay, 
Now, what is big in big data? Right? We, we have been hearing big data for last almost a decade or probably a little more than that. But earlier, nobody was talking about big data. It was all data. Now, what makes data a big data? There are certain characteristics which makes big data. Um, now, one of the things is the sheer volume of data. If you, if you time travel five years back in, in the history, we were using our iPhones or our uh, Google phones or smartphones with the capacity of maybe 8 GB or maybe 4 GB. Now it doesn't exist. Now we have uh, mobile phones with almost 256 GB of storage. Why is that? Because of the sheer volume of data which is generated. Right? Uh, this is the data which, or this is the analysis which is not done by optimally or me, but it is something which is uh, done by various uh, global institutes. We'll share the credits. Similarly, what is the velocity of data? Nikhil talked about uh, motion sensors, uh, how your um, those vending machines are sending data uh, for the further analysis within the servers or how your variables are sending data. It is continuous stream of data, which makes it really big. Now organizations need to prepare or to scale if they are getting tons of these data uh, continuously from various sources. Third is the variety of data. It makes life more miserable for the technical experts where businesses are getting data as a feed. We call that as a RSS feeds or some feeds coming from some bank or you know there are social medias, there are medias where you can go and tweet. There is video data, audio data, all of this, along with the variables. If people are using or businesses are using uh, sleeping pads, a sleeping a device which you put under the pillow uh, and it detects how soundly you are sleeping and then gives you feedback saying, Yogesh, you did not sleep well last night and which I really did not sleep last night uh, because of various things. Uh, also, in terms of the technical terms, we talk about JSON, we talk about CSV, Excel file, log files um, from the servers. We talk about application uh, monitoring or application metrics, which comes in a different form. Tons of the variety of the data. Last but not the least, veracity of data, which is uncertainty. It is very uh, scary when this particular uh, report came out that one in three business leaders, they don't trust data, uh, which they are using to make business decisions. What happens if your systems break for half an hour or for one hour? Are you losing data for that particular time? Now, if you lost data for even half an hour in a day, it will reflect in your metrics. It will reflect in your reporting. If you are a financial institute, you can't afford to bring anything down because there's a, there is a dollar value you know, related to it. So a lot of these data, a lot of the characteristics of data, which makes it really big data. On top of it, there is also a value. Now, you are, you are collecting a lot of volume, velocity, veracity, variety, all good. But if you cannot extract value out of it, it is not so fun. So value is on top of all of this, which makes uh, data really powerful. Now, what is the life cycle of big data analytics? And this is, uh, this is the typical life cycle. It may change from uh, situation to situation, from use case to use case. One is certainly business case evaluation. If you are an online firm selling you know, e-groceries or groceries, if you are an educational institute, your use case may be different. So as a data expert, first is understanding the business case, what problem we are going to solve. Do you already have some implementation there and you want to increase or scale it out or you are starting afresh? That's the first thing in the big data analytics life cycle. Second is the data identification and understanding. What it means is if you are a small organization who has not put your foot down in the big data world or data world, it's okay. You can still understand data. What, what do you need? Uh, or how do you scale your business? Now, there are multiple ways where you can identify data. Maybe you can outsource it. You can get it from outside. But first, understanding is pretty, pretty important. And what format of data you are going to get? 
what is the volume of data that you are going to get or you are going to generate then there is a more technical thing little bit zoom in data filtering extraction aggregation um it is more of making hands dirty with the data torturing data so that it can speak to what is actually the fact i'm not saying what we want to hear but what is the fact is what this data is going to do and the fourth is data visualization and analysis this is what we call as a bi or analysis work where uh, experts in visualization uh, bi or analysts come they analyze this data data science people they come and they understand data between three and four stages and finally when all of this is done there is the you know champagne moment we call the final analysis is out now this analysis may not be accurate for various reasons like data quality issues uh, data uncertainty maybe we did not do a proper implementation in the stage 3 and then there is a iteration over there right so at a high level these are the four uh, or five different stages in the big data and analytics now what it is for you know how do you leverage big data for your business right um, let's understand that little bit so dialogue with the customers wouldn't it be nice if customers come to you uh, your uh, front office person greets the customer and when i say front office it may be online presence where the moment customer log in you have a dialogue with them right you prompt them to enter something you collect some information about what they are looking for let it be the excuse me let it be the search box in your in your online ui where customers are telling you what they are looking for that's a dialogue right? do the dialogue understand what they are looking for and then offer them your service if there is a feedback right dialogue can also be in the form of feedback in terms of service now when you got this feedback you are going to redevelop your product you may be changing your strategy you cannot change your data strategy or your product strategy unless you know what your customers are looking for and uh, as an example i was reading somewhere a big social media changes those emoticons or icons in the reply section every 5 minute depending on the mood depending on the uh, good or bad news if there is a pandemic you would not see those uh, liquor icons or hurray icons you would probably see take care or love or you know hope you feel better those type of icons perform risk analysis we talked about businesses spending uh, hundreds and millions of dollars uh in customer acquisition now when you have done that what is the risk of losing those customers right? is there a is there another competitor competitor coming and maybe eating up your pie those things are equally important how would you do that by looking at what is the age of the customers what is the um what is the frequency when customers are coming to your business right uh if you are a financial institute this also means that you may be going above and beyond and trying to understand what is the fraudulent activity happening on a particular customer's account these are all the you know various options which you can uh, you can opt and use big data for helping you doing that data safety um, there are a lot of research lot of material in data safety data safety in itself is not a big data it is a layer sitting on top of big data uh, you would hear various uh incidents across the globe where credit card numbers were stolen where users pii personal identifiable information that got stolen and compromised now if you are running a business you also need to ensure that your data is safe how you can do that you can probably have a single sign on option you can have a proper authentication and authorization in your system uh if you are on cloud as an example aws you can go for iam rules which is identity Uh, identity access management concept why it is important because if you are showing to your customers to your business owners or your clients how they can control access to this data which you have collected and data is precious how it is secure and if you give that confidence to your customers if you show them uh, how it can be accessed what are the data governance options then certainly it is a competitive advantage and last when you have done all of this identify uh, new revenue streams 
it is not necessarily that uh, you are uh, creating new revenue streams in terms of different product, but also a continuous uh, faster revenue generation for your business. Um, I talked about this. So what? Right. I'm a small owner. I don't have data. This big data doesn't make sense to me. Um, I acknowledge that. If you don't have that data, which is going to help you, uh, you can take full advantage of data, which is available outside your four walls. Uh, there are, uh, you need to come up with a data strategy, what to source, from where to source, how much to source, so that you get a competitive edge, competitive advantage. Now let's talk a little bit about a uh, couple of use cases in the big data world. Uh, these are the real use cases, which we are talking about. Uh, we'll not be talking about a specific organization because of, uh, you know, we want to maintain anonymity. So this client uh, was an online retailer, um, pretty established. The problem statement was, hey, there is a lot of data which we are collecting uh, and we are facing challenges with uh, what data to retain, how much to retain, uh, and primarily because of legal and compliance reasons. So I, I heard that Hamid Sultan, he is from audit uh, system, uh, system manager and uh, in the audit world, uh, probably you may be able to relate to it. Um, if you are collecting data, you have, you have obligation to tell it to your customers to ensure that you're not using it for any other reason other than what you are collecting. And uh, second problem statement for this client was, you can't trust this data. Like the business owners were saying that, uh, there is so much of data, something happened in last month and I'm getting to know about it today. One of the options or big data solution which this particular online retailer opted is the data governance and data quality framework. I'll talk a little bit about it. Data governance is again a vast topic in big data world. What they did was identifying the various sources of data which they were collecting, identifying the reasons for collecting those data. Were those uh, data is specific to a user, we call as a PII, or were those, you know, something public information available about user, right? like social media information. And then they created a framework where what data was, okay, Nikhil? Uh, just to let you know, there's only 10 minutes left, okay? So you just have to yeah. wrap up. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. yeah. And then the data quality framework, which was primarily to uh, ensure that they get notified when they see any issue in the data rather than getting to know about it a month later. Another use case, advertising domain. Uh, we have a couple of folks here from advertising and media. Uh, so this was similar advertising and media uh, domain business. And their problem statement was the scalability issue in the existing solutions. So they implemented big data solutions years ago, which was not scaling to the needs of how data explosion happened. And what they did was they opted for the right technology because the technological choices have evolved and they built a really scalable system to meet the new needs of today. Uh, it was on the Spark uh, as opposed to Hive or MapReduce. It was on Kafka as opposed to Fluma Scoop. There were a lot of these conversations went in and uh, now the systems are pretty scaling well. Now with this, there are a couple of challenges as well. I'll quickly go through it. Uh, it is not a rosy picture, right? There is also, also a dark side of big data solutions. Um, if you don't choose the right technology, you know, pretty sure your systems will not scale. You may not be, you'll be able, you'll end up spending a lot more time in keeping your systems up and running as opposed to leveraging it for your business reasons. And that's what all the business owners want. Now, this is a scary slide. It is put intentionally just to give a, you a view of what all options available there. If you talk about data analytics and platform, you know Spark, you know Hadoop, you know MapReduce and all that. If you talk about uh, visualization, um, there is a, there is a, uh, we have, uh, there is a Tableau, there is a lot more open source like Superset and all. Similarly, for the searching, we have Solar, we have Elasticsearch and whatnot. The idea is not to go through all of these technologies, but to give you a view of what all options are available. And if you would like to simplify it, it is 
very simple you have data incoming you do some databases and data warehouse choices you do some etl and finally you do some analytics let it be investigative targeted or predictive analytics using some of the visualization techniques like tableau right now what are the takeaways big data is vast domain it's like an ocean now you can pick and choose what the solution you would like what solution fits in your business in your uh, application and then uh, make the right decision and here at optimally we work with our clients to understand the concept of understand the use case understand the data requirements help them in collecting those data in the right way we call as a data ingestion help them in processing and finally in the visualization so there is an end to end offering that we have and one thing what uh, we would like to do is if you have any questions you can get in touch with us uh, at info@optimally.se there is a phone number and website as well i would say that let us build the infrastructure for your success and uh, we can take questions nikhil over to you thank you everyone thank you yogesh um thank you for your time um yes um if you guys have any questions please uh, feel free to ask um and even you, know, you can you know send your questions on chat box so you can just unmute and ask her apart from that if you have any specific question on some technical aspect or some other stuff you can always email us or call me uh, we'll be more than happy to answer um so yeah thank you shree yeah is there a question mm, not yet so uh, as i mentioned initially uh, we did not cover very specifics of you know what does spark do what does hadoop do uh, what are the options in the data visualization uh, if there are any specific questions on the spark or uh, you know how do i leverage kafka versus kafka connect versus mirror maker uh, how do we uh, segment our users so we have done several of those things uh, with our clients in past and uh, we would be happy to answer here you know any questions that you may have or as nikhil mentioned you can shoot an email to info@optimally.se and uh, we can have one to one session um uh there is a questions uh right on the chat box yogesh uh he wanted to find out if there is any certificate course on big data um yes there are a lot of certifications uh which are available out there um so if you go and uh, look into the cloud era which uh, you can we can get certified uh on cloud era technologies like hadoop or uh, you know map reduce there is a data bricks which also does certification on data bricks spark uh if you are focusing specifically on the cloud technology i would recommend you to take a look at aws and uh, gcp those are pretty good uh and it also gives you a competitive advantage if you are looking for a job where you would learn uh, these technologies uh how to implement those technologies for the businesses and uh, yeah so i would suggest you to take a look at databricks cloud era aws and uh, gcp great um so yeah, um any more any more questions if not then uh, we can you know can just finish the presentation i don't think so yeah. um yeah so i got i got one uh, okay no carry on nikhil sorry okay um thanks everyone uh, thanks for you know giving us a valuable time this afternoon um, thank you very much for connecting and thank you varun and team uh, for you know organizing this event Um, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.